pakai tangki lemas. Asyik tu original dia ada pos pos. Asyik tu pun tak pergi ke presentasi. Ada yang sesi ama Department of Economics, Department of Innovation, Science and Technology. To help you appreciate the presentation, I will take you through this outline. So I'll give you some background and then I'll focus on the main issues I'll talk about trade performances uh, and I'll look at impediment, I'll look at best practices and the way forward. So why is trade so important? Regardless of which commodity you are looking at, whether you are looking at the aggregate, you are looking at trade at the aggregate level or you are looking at certain specific commodities. We all know or have heard that trade is so key uh, to our lives, to the well-being of people, to everything that we do. So basically, we 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 advocate that uh, trade promote efficient allocation of our scarce resources, uh, realization of economies of scale, facilitating diffusion of knowledge, and the business can go on and on and on and on. So. What role, what role can we expect uh, trade uh, to facilitate or what rules and these uh, theoretical formulations help us to understand the impact of trade? We understand that trade affects government revenues. So government is key to kind of facilitating trade because you can get a lot in terms of revenues. It affects growth, it affects poverty, Inequality, health status, nutrition, and all the other elements that are embedded, whether we want to look at labor differentiation, we want to look at the you know, development goals. You see that trade is a facilitator for trade is an enabler of all the other elements. So trade is really key because it affects our well-being and all aspects of our lives. So if that is the case, then there's the need to facilitate trade. So we need to Understand as policy makers what we mean by trade facilitation or why we need to really facilitate trade. Uh, there are some good reports that has uh, actually come out. For example, if you look at international trade centers report, it indicate cases of countries like uh, those in East Asia that have done so well that have transformed their economies because they have been able to facilitate trade to the highest level. So what it means is that Good export performance, so regardless of the commodity we're looking at, are uh, implications of implementation of relevant trade policies. So if you do not put on good or relevant trade policies, there's no way you can benefit from the success of these East Asian countries. So basically, the emphasis has been on tariff and non-tariff barriers or institutional uh, trade barriers, kind of elimination of all these barriers to help uh, goods move from one country to another more efficiently. So, this the positive effect of trade now is standing, uh, the empirical evidence has not gone very well with the theoretical framework. There hasn't been any systematic impact of trade or trade policies on both trade volumes and also on economic growth or on health or on other key indicators that we are often uh, looking at. So this is or this has always been the case because we argue that trade is not properly facilitated or ineffective trade facilitation in most developing countries of which Africa is not an exception uh, to this rule. So what do we do? We need to understand what we mean by trade facilitation. By trade facilitation, we mean improving transport and border efficiency and reducing all other issues or anything that has to do with movement of goods from one location to another. So reducing all transaction costs associated with trade flows, it means you are facilitating trade. So this can be policies or this can be making it so easier to move from one location to another, or it can be anything that will lead to a lower transaction cost when you talk about, uh, talk about trade. 
But the key is, despite all these uh, benefits, trade facilitation in Africa has been inadequate when you want to compare with other regions of the world. And I say this by looking at this uh, table. And if you look at this table, uh, I'll apply some indicators of <coughs> trade barriers or indicators. Here, I'm looking at the number of documents you need to be able to export from various regions. So here are Africa, Americas, Asia, Europe, and all other countries, the average of all other countries together. If you here, you look at time to export, you mean the number of days or the number of hours. Here, we want to look at the cost. So here, we look at the real cost of moving container from one location to another. Then, the imports uh, components that relates to these export vehicles. Now, I will just pick on Africa and I will pick on real costs. Now, if you want to compare the real cost of moving containers from African country to other part of the world, and you compare that with that of Europe and all the other regions, you see that that of Africa is so huge. And you can also see this practical. For example, if you compare the cost of your flight from your country to uh, Senegal and compare the same amount you spent if you have to go to Europe or other part of the world, you'll see that it is so, the uh, US is really huge. So the key point is trade is really costly if you want to compare a uh, moving container from African country to other part of the world, uh, compare it with that of uh, moving it from Europe or any part of uh, the continent to other, 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 other sections. So in sound, the argument has been that trade is really expensive in Africa if you want to compare it to other parts of, of the world. So in spite of this weak evidence between trade policies or trade or trade facilitation and economic performance, or if you want to look at trade flows or whatever you want to look at, trade is really important, but African countries haven't been able to take full advantage of this benefit because we have not been able to facilitate trade to the level that we have. So the purpose of this presentation is kind of review some of the, uh, the good stories or the good performances that has occurred in the continent. So we basically look at the recent trade uh, performance in Africa, we look at trade impediments, then we look at some best practices. So with respect to uh, trade performance, we can have a glimpse of this uh, so these have been the recent trend in trade performance in Africa. So if you look at this uh, graph carefully, we have data from the 1998 to 2014. And if you look at this export low performance, you will see that it started increasing up to about 2008 and there was a sharp drop and it rose up and it was not sustainable. Now this portion occurred during financial crisis. You know, this has to do with export. And the foreigners will need money to be able to purchase our goods, the goods that we, we, we ship out. And because there was scarcity of money in the system, this was not possible. Now, this table basically looks at overall trade performance. So we're looking at the strongest growth in exports from 1998 to 2014. Now, if you look at it overall, here we are ranking countries based on the overall trade for, 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 for the whole years. And if you look at this portion, we are looking at the average from 1998 to 2007, that is before the crisis, and this portion is after the crisis. And these are the performance of countries in Africa. So this is for the aggregate. Now if you look at this other table, we are looking at the overall export growth, then we disaggregate this into specific sectors. So of our interest, we look at agricultural sector here, and then we look at food products, we look at minerals, and others. So here, even though others constitute a greater percentage, we still see that agriculture compared with food products and compared with minerals, agriculture is still minimal in, in this sense. So we, want, we our focus is to how can we 
ensure that we are able to improve the export performance of our agricultural sector. And here, the ranking here is based on the overall performance, it's not on the individual subsectors. So this is just for your information. Now we come down a bit more, where we want to look at the same, the contribution to agriculture, this is overall agriculture growth, and these are the pre, uh, this is total growth, but this is the pre, um, Crisis, then after crisis, and all the all of it. So this has to do with the goal of agricultural growth. Now we just be looking at food products, food products contributions. So here also we see the countries that are performing so well. This is the overall, and these are the other food categories in terms of the the average of the year before and after and the overall. And then here we have minerals and fuels, but since our focus is on agriculture, I'll move away from this, this part. And this is others. Okay, so what are the issues? We look at trade impediments. So you see clearly that even though African countries are doing well with respect to export of agricultural commodities, export over a period has experienced an increase annually. So they are doing well more or less than when it comes to agricultural products, they are still doing well. So what are the main issues then? So just by this interesting performance, we see that these countries are facing a lot of challenges. The key ones are the following, and so this will be kind of be our take home. Transportation. So issues of road infrastructure and transportation costs, as I raised earlier on. Issues of energy, and now the emphasis is on clean energy. Issues of ICT, so poor quality and high cost of telecom services. All these hinder our trade uh, flows. Then we also have lack of compliance with international rules and standards. So we are not able to meet international rules, so it makes it more or less difficult for us to be able to export or import our products. Then border policies, so issues of clearance, issues of delays, issues of cost, non-tariff barriers, unofficial payment, corruption, all these are hindering our trade uh, performance. Another key issue is lack of access, in terms of access, so limited access to trade finance. So whether our exporters or importers are getting the necessary credits, those who have to export the commodity from one location to another, they need credit to be able to do this. And how are you able to get this? We need negotiation or the kind of policies. You have to, be able to link up with the banks to be able to come up with a more flexible approach to lending, to borrowing relationships. So the way forward, creating competitive infrastructure. So the main issue, if you want to compare trade hindrances in Africa and other parts of the world, has to do more with infrastructure. So here we're talking about the roads, the ICTs, the railways, the airports, the facilities at the port, the facilities at our airport. How is it able to facilitate, or how is this able to help us move goods from one location to another? So these are the hindrances we have to target. Really. Then we also we also need to build capacities in government or to, to better formulate policies that are relevant uh, to facilitating our trade in the region. There are some best uh, practices that we can we can we can we can learn from other countries. If you look at Morocco, they have been able to abolish public monopoly in free allocation. So more or less, um, there was monopoly in the system, and it was kind of a hindering free movement of goods from one country to another. It was kind of hindering contracts and issues related to 
a few moments of goods from one location to another. The transport price deregulation also led to dramatic, dramatic uh, decrease in transport prices. Uh, and this occurred in Morocco and have facilitated uh, increases in their trade. Similar issues happened in Rwanda, the abolition of parastatal Morocco, which led to a decline in prices by more than 30% in normal terms and by about 75% in real terms. This led to a growth in Rwanda's fleet and kind of trade flows increase as a result of this. Other countries have shown progress in terms of export promotion and attraction of foreign direct investment. We can talk about Mauritius. So, through successful export promotion, PPP, uh, public private partnership, uh, which uh, Mauritius implemented, they have been able to attract a lot of FDI, specifically in agricultural sectors. So, more or less, you attract FDI, that will help agricultural sector grow. So, these FDIs will invest in agricultural sector to produce agricultural commodity to be able to export. So they more or less serve as export. And Mauritius became like an export platform for production and, and export of agricultural commodities. And they were able to achieve this through this 3C. Competitiveness, they were able to create a competitive environment. They were able to produce commodities that were conformable to international standards. And they were able to establish a connectivity that was required to move goods from one location to another. Then we also want to look at Botswana. <coughs> Botswana was able to establish the World Development and Investment Authority in 1997, which was able to help them grow in terms of licensing new firms, promoting work permit, visas, and easy access to infrastructure or making sure it is easier for firms to be able to get land and factory spaces. So this calls for government involvement, but not total government involvement. So public-private partnership is key if uh, African trade has to move to another level. Then there were issues uh, that has to do with moving goods across borders effectively. So given the importance of movement of goods across borders, the following have been adopted by some African countries. So more or less, government has to be very fair in taking certain decisions, has to do with making it easier for firms to be able to involve in international trade, moving goods from one country to another. So development of trade-related infrastructure, so you see that everything boils down to infrastructure. And then sustaining this relationship. Okay? So sustainable financing, so this also has to do with access to credit for importers and, 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 and exporters. So basically when you talk about importers and exporters, you are talking about FEPs. So very good relationship when it comes to government and FEPs relationship is very key. And we are talking about firms that are producing for export, producing agricultural products for export in our case. And the following are some of the best practices also in terms of trade policies among African countries. In Ghana, we, we, we had a customs reform and modernization, and recently um, we have just adopted a paperless clearance system. Of course, uh, we hope that this will help government get a lot of revenue in terms of this. So within hours, instead of days, within hours, we're able to clear your goods from the port, and this is really good. So Tunisia, we had improved uh, clearance time, also at the port of uh, rates. So we also have West African Transit uh, Agreement, which makes it easier for people to transit from one country to another. Implementation of structured trading system, and this list can go on and on and on. Then we have issues that has to do with addressing export market assets or making it easier for exporters in terms of market, market assets. So here is a matter of making sure there is enough information for the exporters. Where can they get the markets? And this is key. So market assets for an exporter is really key, especially those related to food and agricultural products because they are perishable. So this is conditioned by several factors reflecting market costs, tariffs, and an assortment of government regulations. So government can play a key role in this. 
Lantari pressure can also represent a significant barrier to trade, to entry into a particular market. The most common are sanitary and psychosanitary measures. So the government has to ensure, the regulations has to be put in place to ensure that we meet these standards before we think of exporting our commodities to other parts of the world. Export opportunities, like conditions of access, also depend as on different strategies and instruments used by the country. So we have to be sure that we comply with the rules governing other countries that we really want to export to. So the concluding remarks. The issue here is that trade is key, and here in particular we are looking at the incident, who, who is really going to benefit or who is going to lose when we talk about trade. And here we talk about the vulnerable, the vulnerable, the vulnerable. And when you talk about agricultural commodities, you usually you see that in our society it is really the poor that goes into the production of agriculture. And if trade is really facilitated, and the goods that the produce are able to get to the market as quickly as is expected, then we expect that the poor will benefit more from trade. And on this basis, we expect that governments will be more serious in partnering with other countries, with other uh, investors who are willing to, to, to partner with government in producing and making sure that the goods uh, properly or uh, the goods are exported quickly to the next market where there is there's, there's demand is very, very key to Africa's agricultural trade and development. Thank you very much.